Hi, my name is Brianna Sanger, and I'm the Nursing Staff Development Coordinator at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. And I will be presenting to you today on cancer prevention and cancer screening. All right, so let's start with why cancer prevention and screening are so important. Cancer is the second leading cause of death around the globe. There were 18.1 million new cases of cancer in 2018, accounting for about 9.6 million deaths. So roughly one of every six deaths in 2018 was due to cancer. And there are expected to be 29.4 million new cancer cases and 16.4 million deaths by the year 2040. Cancer rates tend to be highest in countries whose populations have the highest life expectancy, education level, and standard of living. And cancer prevention and early detection can help to lower the cancer burden for individuals and communities. Uh, many of us also have a very personal or intimate relationship with cancer. We have a loved one who has uh, been diagnosed with cancer or maybe we've had cancer ourselves. So understanding the burden um, both globally as well as individually helps to highlight the importance of preventing cancer and uh, detecting it early. So we'll provide a little background uh, by understanding carcinogens and their role in preventing and detecting cancer. A carcinogen is any substance that can cause uh, or has the potential to cause cancer. These may be chemicals such as asbestos or uh, different chemicals found in tobacco products, arsenic, benzene, or beryllium. They may be environmental, uh, so things like uh, pollution from Agent Orange, exposure to ultraviolet light or radon gas, um, or even different um, physical activity or nutritional factors. They can be viral, such as infection with an HPV virus or hepatitis C or hepatitis B that can cause certain types of cancer. So with all these different carcinogens, uh, our cancer risk tends to increase with age. And this is because the exposure, the risk from exposure to different carcinogens in our life and in our environment tends to be cumulative. There's a lag time from exposure to a carcinogen to the development of a cancer. You can see in this graph here, this is the number of newly diagnosed cases of colon cancer in women in England and Wales over one year. And you can see that as the age of the participant increases, 60, 70, 80 years of age, their incidence of cancer in those age groups increases dramatically. This is because of that lag time required for many cancers to develop and that cumulative uh, exposure to carcinogens increasing the risk of developing a cancer. It's estimated that it takes about six to seven mutations of a normal cell for it to become a malignant or cancer cell or a clinically recognized cancer. And inherited or hereditary genetic mutations may also contribute to the development of cancer. So now we'll talk a little bit about cancer risk and how that influences cancer prevention. Cancer prevention is essentially any action taken to lower a person's chance of getting cancer. Prevention of cancer has many benefits for individuals. Uh, the most obvious is that hopefully you don't develop or get cancer, um, but it also helps to lessen the burden of cancer on the community as a whole and helps to lower the number of deaths caused by cancer. So understanding risk factors for developing cancer or certain types of cancers is important in being able to promote cancer prevention. When we look at risk factors for cancer, we often categorize them as either modifiable risk factors or non-modifiable risk factors. So modifiable risk factors for developing cancer may be things like tobacco or alcohol use, certain infections that have been associated with certain cancers like HIV or HPV, obesity, diet, different environmental exposures or certain medications that have been associated with certain cancers. 
Uh, Non-modifiable risk factors are things that we cannot change, such as our age, family history of cancer, genetics, race, ethnicity, or certain biological sex characteristics. Uh, so it's important to understand that when we look at modifiable risk factors, modifiable doesn't mean easy to change. It just refers to something that theoretically could be changed, reduced, or avoided based on an action uh, compared to something you truly have no control over. Um, so that's not to say that if you uh, have had an exposure to a certain type of infection, that um, because it's considered a modifiable risk factor, that means that you should have been able to avoid it. Um, there are many factors that go into our, our risks for cancer, um, and not all of them are easy to control. Um, you may live in an environment that has a certain level of pollution exposure and not have any resources or ability to move from that location. Uh, so it's not to say that, um, to assign blame or say that you, that, uh, that risk should have been able to be avoided. It's merely talking about the theoretical possibility of these factors being able to be influenced in some way compared to something like your age, which no matter how hard you try, you cannot change your age <laughs> um, or your family history or your uh, unique genetics. So there are several methods that we focus on when we talk about preventing cancer. We can attempt to avoid or control factors that we know can cause cancer, promote healthy changes in diet and lifestyle, identify precancerous conditions early, use vaccines to protect against precancerous conditions, and use risk-reducing surgeries and procedures when appropriate. And we'll talk about each of these in more detail. So for attempting to avoid or control factors that we know can cause cancer, some strategies that we can use might be things like minimizing UV radiation. So that may be limiting sun exposure, not going out in the sun during the hottest parts of the day wearing sunscreen when sun exposure can't be avoided or protective clothing, and avoiding tanning beds, avoiding tobacco products like cigars, cigarettes, vaping or e-cigarettes or chewing tobacco can help to prevent a whole a host of different types of cancers, and then limiting other chemical and drug exposures uh, as possible. So avoiding things like benzene, radon, soot tar oil, or certain medications that we know have been associated with certain types of cancers, such as diethylstilbestrol. We can promote healthy changes in diet and lifestyle. So this may mean you can increase your daily physical activity, decrease or limit alcohol intake, consume a diet rich in whole grains, fibers, fruits, and vegetables, be uh, mindful of the amount of red meats or highly processed foods and consume those in moderation and maintain a healthy body weight. Identifying precancerous conditions early can be a method to prevent cancer. So getting regular mammograms, which can detect early changes in breast tissue before they become cancerous. Getting colonoscopies as recommended by your doctor, which can help spot precancerous polyps in the colon. Or checking your skin regularly for any new or changing moles to identify a skin cancer um, or uh, identify changes before a skin cancer develops. We can use certain vaccines and chemo prevention medications to protect against precancerous conditions. The hepatitis B vaccine can help protect against liver cancer. The human papillomavirus or HPV vaccine can help prevent cervical cancer. And certain medications such as tamoxifen for breast cancer can help to prevent cancers from forming. And for some people, risk-reducing surgeries and procedures may be appropriate. So a patient who has a very high risk of developing breast cancer uh, may benefit from having a mastectomy before cancer even develops. Uh, a patient who has precancerous polyps in their colon can have those removed before they develop into cancer. And a patient who has a high risk of developing ovarian cancer may choose to have her ovaries and fallopian tubes removed entirely. So cancer screening 
is looking for signs of cancer before a person shows symptoms. So in these instances, we are looking to identify abnormal tissue, precancerous conditions, or cancer at early stages. Um, so it's a little bit different than cancer prevention in that we are um, now looking at detecting something early that's already happened. Uh, cancer screening does not diagnose cancer, uh, but it does indicate the need for further follow-up and diagnostic testing. Early detection of cancer is important because oftentimes cancer caught at earlier stages is much easier to treat and cure. There are many different types of cancer screening tests that will uh, depend on the type of cancer that you may be looking for. So you may use things like a physical exam or a health history. Um, so this may be um, getting a regular pap smear or VIA to look at the cervix and check for surgical, cer cervical changes or early signs of cervical cancer. Uh, prostate checks, breast exams, skin exams are all examples of other types of physical exams that look for those early changes in tissue or early signs of cancer. Uh, things like a, you know, a patient reporting changes of blood in their stool uh, might be beneficial for uh, detecting a, an early uh, forming colon cancer or another type of cancer. Using different laboratory tests to check for elevated levels of tumor markers in the blood may be used as a type of cancer screening. Different imaging exams, such as a mammogram, to look for early changes in breast tissue. And different procedures like colonoscopies to look at the lining of the colon and see any early changes to the tissue or early, um, early stages of colon cancer. So some things to keep in mind when we talk about different screening methods. Some methods of screening are going to carry some level of risk with them. So some types of screening uh, methods may have a higher rate of false positive results or false negative results. So either thinking something is cancer when it's not or missing the presence of cancer when it's actually there. Uh, with certain types of especially imaging exams, there may be an unnecessary exposure to radiation for that patient. Um, some procedures come with risks, uh, particularly procedures like a colonoscopy where anesthesia is being used. And then there's the emotional stressor burden on the patient. Um, just going through a screening procedure can sometimes be very stressful and emotional for the patient as they're waiting for the results. Um, screening may not be appropriate for every patient. So it's important to consider the risk of developing a certain type of cancer um, for the patient based on the risk of the screening method that is being used. So for example, a patient who is at high risk for colon cancer based on their family history, their age, and their diet would likely still benefit from a colonoscopy despite the risks of the procedure itself. Whereas a 30-year-old woman with no his family history of breast cancer, no reported breast changes, no other symptoms, uh, may not benefit from a mammogram until later in life when her risk for developing breast cancer increases due to her age. So it's important to weigh um, both sides of the equation when considering uh, what kind of screening is going to be right and having um, a discussion with your provider on which uh, types of screening and for which types of cancers may be appropriate for you. There are many benefits of screening. Again, early detection of cancer often means greater chance of a successful treatment and cure. Diagnosing cancer at earlier stages lessens the burden of treatment for patients and can be beneficial in controlling the incidence of cancer in populations as a whole. So screening methods that produce consistent and accurate results and have a relatively low chance of harm can be very beneficial for patients who are at high risk of developing certain cancers. So it's especially important to um, have conversations with your doctor or with your provider about what your individual risk is based on your level of exposure to different carcinogens, your family history, um, all of those other risk factors that come into play, um, as well as the uh, potential risk or benefit of different types of screening methods. So some key takeaways. Your risk for developing cancer tends to increase as you get older. 
some risk factors cannot be changed, like your age or your family history. Uh, but your risk of developing cancer can be decreased or prevented by avoiding substances and activities that are known to cause cancer and promoting other healthy behaviors. Cancer screening can help detect cancer at an early stage when it can be more easily treated. And it's important to talk with your doctor about what types of cancer screenings may be appropriate for you. Some additional helpful resources for more information are the American Cancer Society, the International Association of Cancer Registries, the National Cancer Institute, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, and the Cancer Atlas. Thank you.